and welcome along to SU TV Live, where come 12.30 today, we'll be bringing you live coverage of the game as Blades host Bristol City here at Bramall Lane. The next hour of, of build-up is free to all Sheffield United fans via this platform, but do remember, in order to watch this afternoon's game, you need to buy that match day pass by heading straight to our website, sufc.co.uk. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say this week's been quite eventful, hasn't it? In fact, that might be an understatement. Uh, between now and 12.30, we'll be covering all the events of the last 72 hours or so. And we'll be bringing you Thursday's press conference from our chairman and CEO as they revealed uh, the new club's football manager, Paul Heckingbottom. Of course, we'll be looking at how both teams line up ahead of kickoff at 12.30. And I'll be doing all of this in the company of my two favourites. Of course, we've got two former Blaze legends sat next to me. First up is uh, SUTV Live regular, Kevin Gage. All right, Kev? Yes, thank you. All good. Nice to see you on a Sunday. Yes, a bit early, but... Uh, it is a bit early, nice isn't it? Up. Bright and early. <laughs> Bright and early. And we have got the lovely Carl Asaba. Carl, how are you? I'm really good, thanks. It's very excited. smiley. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very, very bubbly and happy. You actually said, I wish we started the show at 10.30. Yeah, didn't you? I did. Shoot me, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's lovely. And, you, and I was just saying, you guys, you dressed up for the occasion. I like the Blazers today, guys. There's a lot to talk about football. Leave no, I close. know, but let's just, let, there's no, nothing wrong with appreciating a good Blazer. Okay. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, uh, of course, we've had such a big week, guys. Uh, the headline being, uh, new manager. I don't know whether you heard about that. Oh, I've been away. What's been happening? Really? Well, know. let me fill you in. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, your phones must have been non-stop, right? It, yeah, it's um, it's been a weird week, and we I mean we were joking earlier. It's, it's Sheffield United. It's never boring, is it? There's always something going on. Uh, sometimes it's controversy. Sometimes it's mundane. But but uh, yeah, there's always some things to talk about. And um, it, it had it did come as a bit of a surprise. I must be honest. Um, I, it, what wasn't a surprise is what they've done and and how they've done it and the reasons that they've done it, which we'll get into later. But yeah. A, a, a start of another new era, I suppose, for Sheffield United. I know. it's Yeah, it is exciting. Uh, change, you know, sometimes it's hard to adapt to change, but change could be good. Um, Carl, I know you were on a nice little walk when your phone started um, flying off the handle. Yeah. Uh, how, how did you react to the news? I was, uh, obviously, I was, I was a bit shocked because we just, we had a away victory. But uh, I'm completely behind it. We've, we know the reasons now and the reasoning to it. And... I think everyone's just chomping at the bit. This is our start of our season and we're, we're not badly placed. So things can only go up and just really just excited now. Yeah. And of course, things hopefully will only go up. Um, when you guys were playing, how did you um, deal with the, a change of manager? Did it like put you um, on edge a little bit or was it just another opportunity to show what you had? Um, it didn't really happen to me. I think it only happened once. Funnily mm. enough, it was at Sheffield United when uh, Dave Bassett got sacked and Howard Kendall came straight in. Um, I was injured outside anyway. So, and and it, from my own personal situation, Howard Kendall wanted to change everything around and I was one of the casualties. So it does affect some, some players obviously more than others. But I think the players will, be, will take it very, very positively. It's been good to see from the little clips and, and reports I've read that the training sessions have been really good and up-tempo. And I think, I think it's given the players a, a, a spring in their step. I really do. And, um, and of course, uh, they've only actually had, I think, one training session with Paul. But that said, of course, Paul was with them uh, last season for a bit. So it's a familiar face. Will that work in our favour today? Yeah, of course. And, and the thing is, they know he's permanent. It's a permanent fixture, a permanent appointment. He's their manager, and they're going to be out training to prove they deserve his his place. Um, and as you were saying in the previous question, I, I've only had that once, and all I did was send apology letters and flowers because I was the manager's record signing, and I got him sacked. So that, <laughs> that was me at Reading. So yeah, yeah, uh, not a very good time. For well, me. at least you sent flowers. Can you remember what they were? I don't know. They're probably dead. <laughs> they probably are by now um, and of course uh, it's an opportunity Kev for players to kind of make a, an impression again isn't it we've got a new manager we can restart yes everything starts from scratch um, as, as, as Saabs has just mentioned 
huge uh, advantage that, that Paul Heckenbottom have got, has got is he's been in and around the club for two years and obviously took charge of the first team uh, towards the end of last season and did very well and the players thought highly of him we've got some decent results as well and we got, we got a bit of our mojo back after Chris had left so I, I fully expect there's, there's not going to be a hangover at all I don't think I think this, this afternoon I think the players are absolutely ready for this and I think they'll be firing and it's a chance to, for everybody to as I say draw, draw, um, draw a line under what's, what's happened and to stake their claim for you know, a starting spot and, and to, obviously they're playing for future contracts and careers He's all, you've also got the, uh, the youngsters will be rejuvenated some of the young kids who are not in the first team squad and out the picture they'll be looking they'll be thinking my word you know I've been playing brilliant for the under 23s the last few months I might get a sniff of a first team action here if not a starting berth in the team they'll be introduced into the squad and onto the bench and may get games that way so I, I genuinely think it's the not only the start of a new era but it could be the start of a of a very very enjoyable you know successful Sheffield United era well look how positive we all yeah. are <laughs> well, we were, we were embarking on a, a really savage revolution as it were we were going yeah. to make, be, be making big changes and spending a lot of money which unstabilizes the whole club and now we've gone to a you know a sensible way back to our ethos it's going to be a slow evolution bring through the young kids that's what we're about and it gives everybody hope and belief i love watching the young kids come through and stake in a, a place you don't want to be spending 20 million and not getting the likes of Brunt and Laporta and Jebison on our pitch. So no, it's good. It's a great decision. And, and the manager, you know, he will have been chomping at the bit because he will have been like the rest of us, seeing what we all believed was wrong in, in the previous play of this season. And it's mainly tempo and desire. And the club have been saying, you know, they are looking at the long-term uh, longevity of the club, which that well, works in our favour. Yeah, we, we can't gamble. The, the, the hierarchy, the board, the chairman have been quite honest with, with, with the fans and the supporters and obviously the new manager and everything. You know, we're not going to gamble the club's future by spending £150 million that we haven't got. I mean, you've only got to look across the city at Sheffield Wednesday and a little bit down the motorway at Derby and further down, even Reading, Carlso Club, we beat, um, they've had points deductions. Derby have had points deductions. Derby can be relegated. Sheffield United did get relegated. Mm. Uh, sorry, Sheffield Wednesday did get relegated. So it, it happens. And, and I, I, for one, do not want to gamble the future of Sheffield United Football Club on the, on the possibility that we could get into the Premier League by spending 100, 200 million pounds. Let's, um, let's be sustainable and, let, and let's, you know, let's evolve organically. And there has been a lot of reaction online. You know, that's always, always going to be the case when we have such big news like we have. Um, but, you know, fans, they should be reassured that the people at the very top of this club, the chairman and what have you, uh, they have the businesses, um, they have the business and, of course, um, the club's best interests at the forefront of, of everyone, right? And that's of course, being, being a, a club, I couldn't imagine it, you know. You, you, you're always getting picked on for whatever you do. You have Mike Ashley as a prime example who's plumped in so much money to Newcastle and then people are never happy. We now know our direction. We're going to have a long-term strategy to grow and that keeps Bramall Lane full. You know, we're not going to be doing the ups and downs of the Sheffield Wednesdays because these downs are hard to bounce back from and now we know what we you know we're going to be run like a business so we're going to be maximizing the, the potential of each player and that's good you know signings which will benefit other players on the pitch not spend 20 million and then play a formation that doesn't suit him you know it, it's a great great decision it's a shame for Slav no one likes to see a manager go but it's for the right reasons and we've got time to get promotion I still fully believe we will this season well, let's hear more about our new direction. On the Thursday this week, um, our team at the top were at a press conference talking about the future of Sheffield United. Have a listen to this. I've probably been on an informal interview, if you like, for like 18 months, you know. Um, and that would have been a conversation with everyone, the reasons that I was brought in by Chris, a uh, conversation with Steve, Carl. Um, we're always about these sorts of things, if you like sustainability of the club um, and just improvements in every department uh, when you when you remove from a manager's position if you like it's easier to make all them recommendations when you're in, your, when you're in a manager's position it's about the next game it's about a win um, but all these things are common sense to me when you when you own a football club when you run a football club we there's two there's probably two ways you're going to achieve success one is by throwing a bottomless pit of money at 
a, a, a problem if it is, or chasing success. And the other is creating success by doing things better than everyone else. We and I could feel it the minute I walked into a club 18 months ago. This club had, had taken off, that everything had been put at the top end, everything. Um, and there is a, 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 not a problem, but there is a gap, if you like, now between where we got to and where we want to still be, which is the Premier League. But having the infrastructure and the uh, people and the facilities to go and achieve that again. But then when you get there, sustaining it and staying there. So um, those have always been the conversations while I've been here, not just from me, but from everyone at the club. Was Slavisi Akanovic always going to lose his job during this period of time then? No, absolutely not. Um, the the season has been as 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 we've said uh, lackluster. It, it hasn't evolved as we had hoped. Uh, but <coughs> the performance is not the reason we're making the change. Uh, the it's because of of the of the performance to date over the last 19 matches. Um, we feel it's an opportune time to make a change, but, uh, but it's not because uh, of, of the performance. As I say, we, we weren't ready um, in, in the fall or last summer to implement uh, the strategic plan. We didn't even have a fully articulated uh, strategic plan at that point. We didn't have the personnel resources uh, uh, necessary to implement it. Uh, we do have that confidence now and so it's more a matter of a convergence of several factors uh, and Paul's willingness to take on uh, the job at this point which um, we're, we're delighted that that he's willing it's a challenge um, but it's a challenge we feel and he's he's uh, entirely up to I think we, with Paul Paul did a great job for us taking over in the latter part of the previous season and we all saw Paul's qualities there uh, we saw what an asset he was to the football club and as you said decisions were made at that point but we were at that point also thinking about the long term future of the football club and we respected a huge amount what Paul brought to the club at that point and he was heavily involved in engaged in those long term discussions about the future and with, with, from those discussions it just <coughs> magnified the, the feeling that Paul was the right person to take 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 the reins in the football role um, and drive that department forward for us. Paul and his team are going to 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 cascade the plan and get us uh, um, the more the more detailed and uh, um, solid plan for the coming five six years, which we will approve. Which it will include the investment in in, in players, the investment in the facilities which they need to lead uh, with Stephen, uh, Stephen that is uh, as a, our CEO. Uh, one, I'll, I'll use some of the words I, I see in the media, like we need fresh bloods, we need new bodies in, in, in the coming window uh, or the, in the window be after. Or, no, we will not work this way. We will work with, with the football uh, manager and the team on a longer term plan where, where they can promote players, staff from within and where we, where we can see this football club, as Paul said, more sustainable. So all you've got to do is marry long-term thinking with short-term success? Yes. Quickly? So the club always have to think long-term. Five years' time, <laughs> someone else sitting here, but they might be the benefits of the things that Yusuf's talking about now. That's the aim. Um, my aim is to help try and achieve that, but win on Saturday, win on Sunday this week, and then the week after. And it is my role, if you like, and we've just been speaking about it. It probably has got two parts. But there's a short-term aim for me, which is this season, promotion. Everyone sitting here has seen the league. Um, and I honestly believe that this group of players should be higher up. And this group of players can be higher up, and I believe in them. And that's the exciting thing for me, sitting here. That is my focus, you know, because the, the other bits about strategy and thinking, I could talk about that till the, till the cows come home. That's sort of the easy bit, I believe in that. Um, but the short term, the, the players, the squad, the immediate staff um, and Bristol City on Sunday is, is the main thing in my eyes.
great to hear from everyone there talking about the future of the club and great to hear um, Hecky still feeling very confident about, well, I say very confident, but confident about promotion. Yeah, I think if anyone who's seen this league so far, people are beating each other. And when we've played and we're up a tempo, we're as good as any team. You know, we've outplayed Bournemouth away, who are walking away with the league. I think everyone can see our main problem is we've not been able to keep the intensity up. We've not been able to sustain pressure. It's the manager's job to do that. So whether he has to up the, up the training, get their physical uh, stature higher, it has to be done. And the players have shown they've got the ability to do it. So I think the manager must be really excited because he's taken over an underachieving squad. Players who are good and the previous manager who's well thought of has actually made them underperform. He's getting sixes and fives out of players who can easily perform at an eight. So Hecky will be you know, chomping at the bit, get the boys firing, get the fans behind them because these fans just want intensity and, and tenacity and people giving a bit of effort and they're, you know, they're the 12th man so it's a great job and promotion easily achievable if we can do that because we've got premiership quality players. Exactly, and it is reassuring to see you know, a lot of the people at the top, of, uh, sat on that table, uh, are in line. They've got a similar vision, and it feels like you know, just the length of uh, Paul's c contract says that and g g fills us with confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're there to be shot at, aren't they, the directors of the club? It's, it's their money at stake. They're, they're the owners of the club. So we, we have to go with what they want to do. We have to respect that. And uh, from my point of view, at least we all know where we stand now. You know, we won't be screaming and shouting for 10, 15, 20 million pound players in January, which was probably what um, Sl Sl Slav wanted. You know, he, he's already set his stall out. He wanted this, he wanted that, he wanted wingers, centre midfielder, etc., etc. It all costs, doesn't it? And then we've got all the players we've already got here. So um, I think they made a decision, obviously, you know, a few weeks ago. Don't, don't think it was that long ago, to be honest. I don't think they were going thinking of this months ago. It, it's, as, as they said, performances have dictated. They acted when they did. I think the catalyst for it was probably the home game down here against Coventry. Because I have to be honest, that was one of the worst performances I've seen in the first half from Sheffield United that I can, that I can remember. You know, and I've been the one talking up the performances to a certain extent most of the season because I generally think we've been OK. You know, at times we've been very, very good, but we just haven't got the results, you know, that we deserved. And we're in a results business, obviously. Uh, going on from what Carl said, I, I do think we have an op opportunity here because we've still got good players yeah. and, and the manager hasn't been sacked because we're bottom of the league, which usually happens with managers. You know, we're still, we're still, I don't know, eight points off the playoffs, which is nothing really with yeah. over half the season left to go. Exactly, we've still got a long way to go, but we can see, you know, some of the fans are making their way into the, the stands, it's filling up here. Um, these fans are going to want to see a win today, and I think it's probably really important to make that statement for the club, isn't it? Well, the fans booed at half-time at the last home match, it's, it's unprecedented, because we can always play badly, and I've played badly for the Blades many times, <laughs> but, but they appreciate you running and trying and, you know, understanding that you're, you're lucky to be in the shirt, and I think there's been like a an apathy. The players the other night, first half at Reading, I'm there and I thought, well, am I allowed to start texting? Because it was boring. It was like, it didn't matter. And then they did pick it up in the second half, but it's not acceptable. We've got a real good chance of promotion. You've got people taking half days from work to go and support you. We just want intensity and, and determination and trying. And at least it's been acknowledged. The board have acknowledged it. They don't want our fans booing. They're loving 28,000 turning up each match, but they want to give them something. So I think it's been a really positive week. You can see the owner isn't happy how it was going. The chairman's not happy. Then the chairman's saying, well, I don't even want to be known. I just want the club to do well. And some people have reacted badly to that, but I think it's a good thing. Kev thinks it's a good thing because he wants the manager and the team to take the, the spotlight. So everything's pointing to the right direction now and the fans are going to be here cheering and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm talking just rather because I'm very excited. Oh, this. it's so nice that you're so excited. Um, and of course, we don't want frustrated fans, do we? We want happy fans um, and happy fans at home, not only here at Bramall Lane. So do make sure if you want to watch the game at 12.30 uh, to get your match day pass on our website, details below, sufc.co.uk and make sure to join us for all of the coverage this afternoon because it is a really important game definitely not one to miss right should we have a look at how the teams uh, line up today 
Let's have a look, starting with the visitors. Bristol City, let's have a look. Now they have got one change, Bristol City have. Well, the Bristol, the Bristol City team, once again, we say this most weeks, don't we? But they're not well-known names, are they? So we're, we're still... We're still uh, what we do know about Bristol City is they usually play similar to us or similar to how we think we play with, with three centre-halves, wing-backs, midfielders and a couple up front. We know the two up front is going to be Chris Martin, who's an old-school centre-forward. He puts himself about and he's their main target. And then we've got uh, Viner, who's an ex-Aston Villa player, mm. who flips around and scores a lot of goals. But the one, the one interesting thing about Bristol City this afternoon is the, is the young players they've brought in. If you can see numbers 36, 38 and 42, they're the squad numbers. And that tells you that they're not, they're not first team squad players. And they are, Alex Scott is 18, Ben Arousse is 18 mm. and Masengo is 20. So that is very, very young to be thrust into, into the first team. But this uh, is nice, or nice. Is, is this his second or third match now he's, he's taken over? I mean, it might be by, uh, he might be forced into these changes, okay. but certainly Scott, Scott and Belarus, you know, they've, they've been playing a few games now. They've been regulars for the past five, six, six, six games. So obviously, Pearson maybe is doing exactly what the Sheffield United mm. he, uh, have, have decided their strategy is going to be. Sim two similar kind of uh, ethos. Mm. Well, let's have a look at how Sheffield United line up as well. Uh, we've got one change here, and Harahan comes in for, of course, um, John Fleck. Yeah, it's, it's one change, but we, we believe it's going to be two up front and a completely different mindset. So I, I feel that the, the formation, the three at the back, it's, it's something the boys will be comfortable with, but I think the major thing is going to be the mindset, two up top, and just the speed of play. I think you could play 4 4 2, 3 4 3 3. If your mentality is not right, it's not going to do well. And this set of players, if they're given the right mentality and the right instruction, I, I'm looking at a comfortable win. Like you say, 3 5 2 probably formation today. It, it's, the, it's the formation and structure we know so well and has worked so, so successfully in the past. But, in, but the crucial factor is it suits our players. Yeah. So many times we've, we've been down this season and we've been, I think we've been trying to fit players into, into Slav's formation and they weren't too comfortable with it. You could sense they weren't. And everybody was screaming for three centre-backs, mainly to get Basham back in the side, <laughs> which needed to happen. So I, I'm, look, we're all totally comfortable with, with the three centre-backs because it, it, sometimes it's a defensive ploy, but in Chef United, with Chef United's players, it's an attacking formation. I was, I was critical for the last couple of weeks because it, it seemed to me that the, the formation was trying to take away from certain players and make it even more evident that we needed players in January. You know, playing Brewster out wide was sort of making him look ineffective and not playing to his strengths and like a reason to say, well, look, we need another striker because these aren't firing. You play Shearer wide right and say he's a striker, he's not going to score. And I just felt we were, we were hampering our own team. We weren't getting the best out of what we had. Um, and I felt that was the, the main negative part from Slava's point. He's been brilliant, he's got a great CV, but I felt he was so stubborn and he didn't just say, well, I'm going to get the best out of these players because I, I, nowhere near did he. Well, in a moment, we will have a, a look at Slav's last game, our highlights against Reading. Of course, that was on Tuesday night. But first of all, let's hear from David McGoldrick, who I caught up with earlier today. It's been a big week at Bramall Lane. Of course, you've had a new manager come in in Paul Heckingbottom. Um, is it just business as, as usual? Yeah, you know, in... Uh, main bit of the season, important part of the season, you know, it's, it's been a strange week with events, you know, a couple of different events that's happened, um, but, you know, uh, the manager now, um, Hecky, you know, we're familiar with how he wants to, to play and how he goes about his job, so um, we've seen him all the season round with the 23s and that, um, so, you know, we're used to what he wants to do and we know what he wants to, to bring, so we've got to take that into today. Um, of course, you've only had one training session altogether. How have the side responded to him and his staff? And will we expect many changes now that he's in control? Yeah, obviously, he'll want to do things his way. Um, you know, he's brought his own staff in that he wants. Um, you know, the way he plays is, in, you know, intensity. You know, he wants us on the front foot. He wants us, you know, more higher pressing up the pitch. And we've got to take that into today. You know, obviously, last year he came in... Um, 
and he changed it a bit then and, and he wants to do the same this year. He wants to put his, his stamp on the way that we play. Well, you had a great assist as well back on Tuesday against Reading. Uh, is today an opportunity to stake your side, your place in the regular side? Yeah, yeah I think that's one place uh, in the in the team, you know, where we're, we're overloaded with, with players. You know, we've got a lot of forward um, players and, you know, it's, it's not easy to get a game. So I've got, it's, it's down to me um to to make my my mark on the team and, and show you know the new manager even though he knows what i can do it's a clean slate for everyone to show him what i can do and of course you've got a fixture this afternoon against uh bristol city how are you going to break them down it'll be tough you know they've got um they've got good championship players you know we know all about their players um big strong lads it's going to be hard you know, we're going to be patient at times, um, but, you know, I think first and foremost, we've got to uh, be in ten intensity. We've got to be on the front floor. You know, we've got to get the crowd on our side and um, and get some chances. And hopefully if we get a few chances and score a few goals, you know, then we can we can get the three points, which is what, what we want today. That's exactly what we want today. Well, thank you so much for your time and go well. No problem. Thank you. Intensity and being on the front foot. Kev, that's exactly what we need to do, starting from that opening whistle. 100%, yeah, I think that's what, what's been lacking. Uh, certainly the past couple of home games, couple of three home games. So, yeah, I think, the, as I said earlier, the players will be really, really up for this. And I expect that from the first whistle and all the way through the 90 minutes. And it will be a time to showcase their ability. I'm sure Paul Heckingbottom is obviously across uh, all the players. Uh, but still, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a fresh start for everyone, new blood. Um, and, of course, uh, McGoldrick got a great assist on Tuesday as well. Yeah, he's got great quality, he did really well, found a, a searching cross to Bogle and a wonderful goal for us. Yeah, he's a good player, Did he? he's, he's just, he's been quality. Great, great signing. Well, speaking of that wonderful goal, let's have a look at how things played out on Tuesday night as we went head to head with Reading. Sheffield United looking to kickstart their season once again. Keeper's got underneath it a little bit there. It's retrieved at the back stick. Bit of a miscue from Gibbs White. Norwood. Chance to deliver now for the former Reading man. And it goes. Keeper looks like he's lost his bearings once again. And David McGoldrick holds his head. Gibbs White to strike it over the wall. Against the crossbar. Back into the mix and Reading clear. Sheffield United are knocking on the door. Useful run, there's a lot of space to the right-hand side as well for Yeardham. Low cross is a good one, that was a very good interception. A deep corner, and a towards goal, I think Foringham had it covered. Knight had started the first half really well. Let's see how they begin the second 45. Kept in by Stevens. Running only half clearing, might come down for Gibbs White on the spin. It's a good flick on by McGoldrick, here is Rian Brewster, flicks it inside, comes here for Gibbs White. Jaden Bogle, smart save by Southwood. Flick on by McGoldrick. I think Stevens might get to this. Brewster in the box, so is Gibbs White. Goes back to McGoldrick. In goes the cross. There's Bogle round the back. Jaden Bogle. Fabulous finish by the fullback. Found by David McGoldrick. His first goal of the season and Sheffield United lead. Keeper not sure. Advantage played as Howraham attempted to make a challenge. Then Carroll with a strike and a good save from Fodrigham. Diving to his left. Swift. Swift will put it into the mix. Decent ball in. Southwood clears. There's the final whistle. Well, it was great to get those three points earlier on in the week. Both Carl and Kevin, uh, you were both working on the game. Kev, you said it was a really important win for us. Oh, it, was, it was a huge win. It was, it, was, it was nearly a must win, to be honest. And I say that because Reading was so poor, really poor side. So games like that, you just have to get the result. And it, it was good to win ugly, if you know what I mean. Uh, we were nowhere near our best, but we just about did enough. And a couple of chances came and we, we were... Did well, you know, Bogle did very, very well to tuck that one away. 
really important three points. And Reading is a tough place to play away. I mean, it's always tough to play away, but to come away with three points, we should be happy with that. Yeah, and after our performance against Coventry, you know, we were still much better than we were against Coventry, but we spluttered. Um, but all through that evening, I thought our defence were incredible, really marshalled them well. They worked as a unit. Young Wes in goal has been head and shoulders above where Olsen has been for us. And it's good to see, again, another young lad coming through. And the big, you know, the finish from Bogle was incredible. Really hard finish that. Really firm ankle. Good, good, good finish. Good goal. Worthy winner. And aside from the three points, I think what the main thing was of the game is that John Fleck, um, well, now we know that he's uh, on the, very much on the mend. Uh, but the team showed real mental toughness and professionalism on that, on that main stage, on the field. Because, of course, there were huge distressing scenes that day, wasn't there, Kev? Yeah, it's, it's, no one wants to see that, do we? And, and we, the only thing we can take away from that is apparently John Flex, you know, on the mend and he's going to be absolutely fine. So, so all our wishes go to him, obviously. Yeah, one of the key players in our, one of our best periods as a club. He's, he's a lovely lad and uh, we're all wishing him a speedy full recovery. Yeah, we definitely are. Um, everyone here at the club is sending their best to John Fleck and we can't wait to see you very soon. Um, now, let's get the thoughts of Jade Bogle, our um, goal scorer from Tuesday, here's his post-match interview. Uh, the team, obviously, prior to today, had failed to win their last four, so how important was it that you were able to get over the line today? Yeah, massive. It's a, it's a turning point for us. We need to push forward now and we looked a lot more solid defensively. Um, we created a few chances as well. Um, so, yeah, it has to be a turning point for us because we haven't been, haven't been quite as good so far, but, but now we need to really turn it on. And how do you sustain that? Even in, even in matches recently, Sheffield United have had periods of games for however long where the possession with pace and, and, and effectiveness has been great, but it's sustaining that. How, how do you do that and why, why don't you do that on a regular basis? Um, it's tough. The championship's a very tough league um, and there's going to be some days where, where the opposition are are on top there'll be some games when you're on top but I think we just need to, to try and focus on dominating games focus on putting teams under pressure being defensively solid and then creating chances and then when we get them chances putting them away and we've done that today so so yeah, it's, it's a positive result you mentioned about being defensively solid today is, has anything changed or been worked on or said in the last couple of games that's enabled you to get to that because Coventry didn't have a great deal either tonight you look very solid for the most part throughout. Yeah, just go back to basics, defend 1v1 jewels, being strong, marking in the box, being organised as a team, um, all of them things, just, just putting them together for 90 minutes and, and doing that and then and then going forward, focus on that as well. But <clears throat> our priority is to, to keep clean sheets and we've done that again tonight. And for you, nice to get the goal, tidy finish too as well from a, well, quite a tight <laughs> angle. Yeah, definitely, I should have, should have scored the one before. But um, yeah, it's positive, positive, for me um, but yeah again it's about the team tonight and especially for Flecky. How are you assessing your own contribution then right now? Yeah I'm just just enjoying playing um, and enjoying getting results I think today was a massive one and it's about the team at the moment um, not about individuals so, so yeah I'm enjoying my football but ultimately it's about winning games and getting three points. You're a Reading lad aren't you? Yeah I'm yeah, here. Are great you a that Reading one. fan? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Said bluntly. Yeah Said nah. Bluntly. <laughs> Jaden Vogel there talking to SUTV Live after the game on Tuesday. He really was one of the great success stories of that game and he's been doing really well in recent weeks. Yeah, he's fitted into the defence on the turnaround of their, their uprising performances and his goal was a really good quality finish. You know, it was a difficult ball to, to knock in uh, and he played well. He's a local Reading boy, his family were there and it was really nice for him. I hope he, you know, he gets more confidence because you can see he's growing. Um, first couple of matches he was a bit jittery but he's going forward and we're seeing the real bogle now. And that was a difficult cross from um, uh, David McGoldrick as well. Yeah, it's just all about technique isn't it? You just have to, as, as Carl said earlier, it's just a good side foot. He didn't lash at it, didn't try and hit it too hard. It's all about getting a good connection. But he, he's such a good attacking fullback. You know, the wing back role is made for someone like Jaden Bogle. He gets into some great positions 
he could have had a, a couple more goals in recent weeks. You know, he's been he's been opportunities to shoot, and he's cut inside on his left foot, and it's got blocked. You know, so hopefully that goal will give him confidence to you know if he gets in positions similar to that, have a have a real blast at goal because he's got the technique, he's got he's got the physicality, he's got the athleticism to get into those positions, and he's a decent finisher when he gets a chance. Mm, composure on some of those finishes there. Look at that. He's looked up and he slotted yeah. that. Really great finish. And all of that in salmon pink. <laughs> I love the kit. I must admit, I do love that kit. Mm. They look great there. And so speaking about the other end of the pitch, um, defensively, we've also been doing really well. Um, we've scored, uh, we've done record uh, clean, back-to-back uh, -back clean sheets against Coventry and against Reading. Uh, so that's working slowly, mm. but, but slowly getting there. Yeah, they, they can only build on it. Kev will elaborate more. I've just... I, I'm enjoying the, the growth of Wes in goal. You know, against Coventry, he made a couple of saves and he, and he grew. And then the other night against Reading, he, he looked so confident. And I think that comes from the people playing in front of him. Yeah, and I, just, I mentioned a few minutes ago about the three centre-halves and uh, it has its, has its benefits for us in attacking sense. But of course, it makes us more solid. You've got another big centre-half in there. We've brought Basham in and he's a good defender, very good defender. So, of course, when crosses come in, we've got an extra man in there to head it away. I think it suits Egan as well. John Egan's getting back to something like his best form when he's organising the players around him. And I think it suits him just being in the centre rather than being at one of the two centre-halves. And Davis is a good defender as well, you know. I'd like to see him a, bit, a little bit more in an attacking sense, coming forward a little bit quicker with a bit more a bit more tempo. We keep mentioning that word, don't we? But it's true. He's not going to be Jack O'Connell. He's not Jack O'Connell Mark II, but he can certainly do the role of that left centre half quite quite easily for us. Now, lots to look forward to come kickoff in just over 20 minutes time. Of course, we take on Bristol City right here at Bramall Lane. And that's not all we've got to look forward to. We've got loads coming up on Saturday, the 4th of December. Kickoff at 3 p.m. Join us on SUTV Live as we take on Cardiff City. Richard Graves will be with you with Rob Kozlak and Kevin Gage. So that's going to be a good one. Don't want to miss that. And on Monday, the 13th, We've got another game, uh, so do make sure to join us on SU TV Live, uh, where Kevin, Kevin Gage and Carlos Alba, you're going to be here again for that one. Dream team. You cannot yeah. get enough. I really can't. Um, <laughs> and uh, Black Friday, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been, you guys have definitely been spending your money, haven't you, on those nicer, nicer blazers. Um, Black Friday deals from our shop. Today is the last day, 20% off everything. So if you want to get some Christmas stocking fillers, do make sure to head to our website and get some bargains. And all oh, these are my favourite mini kits. Did you guys used to get these when you were younger? No, they weren't around mini well, kits. Well, oh, that's sad. Yeah, well, who was. knows? Who, oh, you, think, you might not fit into them, actually, but I might, might treat you. Uh, mini kits for the kids. Uh, of course, Christmas is just around the corner, so a perfect present. Um, and uh, they'll be 20% off as well, so do make sure to get a bargain. Um, so I know we touched on the teams earlier in the show, but um, should we have a little look at how they line up again? Just to remind you at home, or for those of you who have just tuned in, Sheffield United, this is how uh, we line up today. Like we mentioned, one change, Harahan comes in for John Fleck, so much of the same. But you got Endai on the bench, you know, last match, one of our guiding lights of the season was playing in the under 23s, so immediately the manager sort of pop, pop paid to that, that let's, let's keep a grip on reality and keep our good players in our first team. So, and young Jackie, Jake Eastwood's on the bench as well, young up and coming keeper, bringing you through, that's what we need to do. Yeah, fresh blood, fresh blood there. Hey Kev. Yes, absolutely. Um, we talked about defensively, and in an attacking sense, McGoldrick will do his bits and bobs, won't he? Another opportunity for Brewster to come into the side and you know to, to stake a place, but a lot of emphasis on uh, Gibbs White. To be honest, he's he's been our main creative player for most of the season. Everything we seem to do well comes through him, or he's involved in. So uh, I hope he's not shunted out more on the right hand side. I think. Uh, I want, I want him to play as like a traditional number 10. Yeah. If we're going to go back to the three centre-halves and the wing-backs, two central midfielders, he's the one who needs to be the floater and to, and to go all over the pitch, not, not yeah. just be stationed out, uh, not wide on the right, but on the right-hand channel. I'd like him to get involved a whole lot more. I just feel if he's playing two up top, the, the tempo of the ball, you know, 
play it down the sides quickly so that Brewster's facing their goal. Show, him, show our defenders your number and then let McGoldrick come short, have the option of Gibbs White bombing in behind, just being everywhere, being busy. And I think that's it really. The key is being busy today because unsettling defenders, you don't have to play perfect football, but if you're energetic and, and you, you're dynamic, you can unsettle them and we've got to play for that. And if the ball does go to anyone, we know Dizzy's got the quality. He missed a few chances against Coventry, but then he's shown us our quali his quality again against Reading. So I'm, I'm really, I'm hopeful of goals. What is it, expected chances? I'm expecting lots today. Lots of chances. It yes. is going to be a good game. And let's have a look at how our visitors line up. Bristol City. Yeah, no great surprises. It, it's the, 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 the match us up, basically, Bristol City. It's, uh, it's three at the back, wing backs, central midfielders and strikers. So there's nothing to, nothing to write home about. Um, they're, they're a, basically, they're a run-of-the-mill championship <laughs> side. And if Chef United have got any ambitions of getting in the top six, you know, we have to be beating the likes of Bristol City at home at Bramall Lane. It's a key first goal. Key first goal and then we push on. These are their last five results there. I mean, we should be winning. We, sh we want to be winning. Um, so hopefully we will get those three points today. Mm, but they beat Stoke last time out, which is it's a tough old match. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I, I'm not being disrespectful when I say oh, Bristol City are running the mill side. They just are. They're, they've got a good manager, Nigel Pearson. You know, he's taken he's taken over there, and he's been around the block, hasn't he? So he, he knows what's what. He'll have tightened them up probably defensively because yeah. that's that's his position. That's what thorough. he used to work yeah. on. So um, yeah, they, they'll work very very hard. I've already mentioned they've got youngsters in the side, so they'll be enthusiastic, they'll be fit and they'll be committed. And these youngsters are obviously, listen, if, if you're good enough, then you're young enough, you know. Or the other way around, actually, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, but they'll, they'll, be, they'll be buzzing around them. They'll make life difficult for us, I'm sure. But, you know, we've mentioned, we keep mentioning it, we mention it every week. We are, we've got some good quality players on our side. And if we play anything like our potential, with a bit of passion and, and enthusiasm and desire and commitment and all those similar words we should be too good for the likes of Bristol City well I've got a nice treat for you both because SUTV live they uh, the gang here have been going through the archives and found last season's game uh, in the FA Cup as Blades were victorious against Bristol City City have a look at this see uh, with the latest shrill of the referee's whistle we are off and underway Keith Edwards and it's FA Cup football at Bramall and then Hunt coolly plays it in field but it's given away Viner robbed of the ball by Sharp McGoldrick from the apex of the, the right of centre it's up to the edge of the penalty area a glancing header by low and a shot well saved by Ramsdale from just inside the penalty area it was well struck by Callas and pushed away second as I was doing my preparation and I'll come back to it as Bogle slaloms up to the edge of the box lovely touch from low oh almost a glorious goal Great control, it's set up on the half volley. The channel of the penalty area, he's got support from low and Ampadu will cross first time, headed chance! Oh, 37th minute, Ampadu will just play it swiftly with the outside of his right boot to Lundstrom, left footed he hits it, in the end it's straight at O'Leary. The left wing back will concede possession, then Billy Sharp takes up the advantage again for Sheffield United. Now Ampadu up to the edge of the box and a turning Bogle will just bend one, just in front of the D quite far over the angle of crossbar and pop. Yeah. Now Low and Bogle combining, back to Low again, decent ball in, Sharp! Oh, and it was just missed by Sharp. Bogle, Bogle in now to Basham, inside right channel of the box, McGoldrick bends one with his right boot and it just veers away from O'Leary's goals in Manchester United and West Ham last night as Billy Sharp played in, in it goes, left now, McGoldrick shooting, chance! Oh, and it's hit the crossbar, it came off the defender, it's left now for Lundstrom, he will shoot, squirmed under the goal keeper off the line we have VAR and they are checking for a possible oh, right. handball penalty Premier League ground is one of the unfair things about uh, VAR in the FA oh, Cup sorry. penalty on second glance it passed the goalkeeper's outstretched hand and hit the defender's hand yeah. so this should be a penalty it should I think he'll, he'll get that eventually yep 
Well, indeed it is. Yeah, yeah, and indeed well. that VAR call has been made, and of course, because of the deliberate nature of it, there will be a red card too as oh, well. He's now on the blade, skipper Billy Sharp, usually deadly from the spot, and again so he is, beating the keeper Max O'Leary, who dived the right way, but the penalty had just enough venom on it to fire past the goalkeeper and into the bottom corner. Is that the goal? The, the penalty, penalty area, McGoldrick! And from just inside the box, after a little stumble, he's fired his shot wide to McGoldrick. Goal. McGoldrick on his right boot takes on his man, and from the D on the edge of the box, it's a, a high shot. Comfortable in, in seeing the game out. So Burke is sent to chase one. He's got O'Leary for company, and he's rounded the goalkeeper, but he's a long way wide. Then he's passed the ball in. Stay from Callas in the first half. The ball's tossed up the middle of the pitch on the half volley. It's missed, but the referee blows his whistle for full time. So, in consecutive seasons, Sheffield United make it through to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. A great win for us against Bristol City there, 1-0. We'd like the same again. And, of course, similar weather conditions because it's absolutely freezing here. Lots of snow on the way up to the studio today. Uh, Kevin, I've got something for you as well. Uh, let's have a look at this. Oh, wow, this is a few years ago, isn't it? Um, yeah, about 27, I think. Oh, wow. I think that was Charlie Hartfield there with the first goal. Yep, it yeah, was who's, indeed. Who's, who's, who's struggling at mm. the moment, so not very well. So uh, yeah. best wishes to Charlie. Yeah. Definitely. There's been uh, lots of people sending him good... Good luck messages and stay strong messages on uh, social media. So if he's out there, that's from all of us again. Yeah, sending him lots yeah, of love. Yeah, this is Bristol City at home. We were struggling. I think I think we were mid-table in the Championship. We just got relegated the season before in the Premier League. Uh, and I thought, I thought, why not hit one from 30 yards? Jeez. Look at that! Oh, it's quite interesting because that that was the year <laughs> we didn't have a didn't have a stand on the John Street side. So I turned to celebrate with the fans, and there's no one there. So luckily the bench were over, the, but the, the bench was over that side in those days. Uh, we had a bit of old scaffolding. They made a kind of bench out of it. <laughs> Why am I always coming bench. in to watch his super goals? Oh, we couldn't find any. I, mean, I never score, but he's got in top corners each time I'm in. <laughs> Beautiful, we, Kev. Great I, I did ask him to try and dig one out that you did, but... Uh, lucky if you find a successful short pass from me. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, moving on swiftly, um, it is probably time to hear from the new man in the hot seat. It is our new football manager for Sheffield United, Paul Eckingbottom. Well, Paul, congratulations. Uh, how excited are you to be the next man in charge of Sheffield United? Yeah, can't wait, can't wait. Really looking forward to it and, and getting started tomorrow. Get back with the players. The bits that you really enjoy as a manager, well, I do, is working with the players and being on the grass and then the, then the game days. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting stuck in tomorrow. I'd imagine it's been a bit of a whirlwind the last few hours for you. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been crazy, Taz. It's uh, yeah, it's all that that uncertainty is really unsettling. But the uh, the opportunity is too good, you know. And and having worked with the players last year, um, the staff, um, I know the club. It's, um, it's it's an opportunity I can't turn down. I'm just really excited to get going and get working with the players. You obviously have had many conversations with the board. How positive were they? Yeah, lots of com. To be fair, I think most conversations was probably led to this decision has been over last season, towards the end of last season, um, just dealing with general things regarding football and, and this football club. And when we, when you put forward your your opinion on things, it's obviously being listened to. And uh, so then we've got to a point now where I've been offered the the manager's job, and it's a fantastic opportunity, as I said. And and and. Throughout that time, then you, you are probably getting a better grip and understanding of of the club and and uh, the long term aims of it and how they want to achieve success, which is fine. But probably the the other thing is, I know the players and and I really think that this season can be an exciting one, regardless of the start, regardless of where we are right now and everyone's thoughts and feelings of uh, of it right now. I think with a tremendous amount of hard work and and no excuses at all, we can turn it round and be up there competing. You'll obviously want to hit the ground running and being in the club and having worked with the players before last season, that gives you that opportunity, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. And listen, I was I was pretty open and clear about my stance last season. I'd been asked to come in and do something totally different by Chris and 
and the staff and, and I felt that was the best place for me without a doubt. Um, but now I feel like we can maybe build on that work that's been done and, and really get a focus on um, some real good long-term decisions at the club but without neglecting the, what's the most important right now which is Sunday's game um, and this season. And, and as I say, I feel more confident saying that having worked with the players, I believe in them and I know that that we should and could be up there competing but it's going to take a hell of a lot of hard work, um, a lot of determination as I said, it's no excuses, it's a mental If we want to get there we have to go and earn it. You know, we've, we're in a handicap position, position, if you like, with the, with the start we've had, so we're chasing. Um, but it's up to us. If if we sit back and we wait for it to happen, it won't. So we have to go and attack it and try and make the most of it. You know these players really well. I mean, we've even added one or two that you'll have worked with before as well. I mean, you've got a good grasp of their abilities, the proven championship players. There's still time, isn't it, to turn this season around? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's that's my message to them, to everyone, the staff. Um, no one can feel sorry for themselves. Um, we we have to, uh, yeah, focus on what's ahead of us. First game's Bristol City, but most games are very similar in terms of you, you wouldn't be surprised if a team wins in the championship and you'd, you'd be just as, as unsurprising if they get beat. Um, so we have to find a, a real level of consistency through our hard work that, that allows us to pick up more points than, than others and, and claw that gap back if you like. So, yeah, I'm, I'm confident we can do it though. I know I keep saying that, but the fact that I have worked with these players and and I do know them, and I saw they responded last time. I'm, I'm looking forward to get going with them. You just spoke in your main press conference about how much you enjoyed your academy role, but how much are you looking forward to now seeing one or two of those develop and perhaps come into the first team? And we've seen one already this season, and Illiman come through and do a good job. Yeah, yeah, Illiman and Reese are, are sort of established in the first team squad now, which is great. We've got a few of the boys out on loan in the league and a few out in non league, which is good. And that sort of uh, constant drive to push them has to still be there, you know. We have to still keep making sure that the challenges are appropriate for the players and that they're, they're at the right time. Um, and we keep giving them opportunities to improve and, and drive forward. And, and if we get some more in the first team, fantastic. But listen, I, I want to be clear, and, and I said it last time, it's not just a case of we're just giving debuts out. The focus is on winning games, so they have to be good enough. you know. And if they have to go out and learn that on loan, what that first team mentality is like, then they'll go out on loan. But hopefully, as I said, if we, if we keep that drive and that determination within the academy, there could be a few more get within the squad. Great to hear from Hecky there. Now, I must remind you that if you do want to join us and watch the game, the kickoff is at 12.30, so just under 10 minutes' time, and you do need to make sure you buy your match day pass on our website, sufc.co.uk. Otherwise, you won't be able to see all the action, and that's exactly why we're all here. Um, of course, we're just listening to Hecky there. Kev, he... Um, Obviously, he joined the team, joined the side um, this week alongside Jack Lester and Stuart McCall. They're going to be itching for a win. Are we going to get one today? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really enthused today. The feels there's a, there's a different, a different feeling about the club. I think there was a sense of frustration and uh, and. And disappointment wasn't there last last week, a lot of apprehension as well. But I think there's a really good feeling about the club. There's a huge amount of um, warmth for Stuart McCall from what he's done, you know, in the past as a, a, on the pitch for us, and also, yeah. you know, as he's been in the management role as well, or assistant manager's role. So huge uh, warmth and affection for him. He'll get a great reception. And of course, Heckingbottom and, and Jack Lester were brought in by Chris Wilder to do a job here. So he's he's a good judge of character, Chris. So they were the right type of people for Chef United. So I think as a management team, no worries about them whatsoever. They'll get the best out of this, this team and they will get Sheffield United fans back on side. Oh, well, we will see. We'll see how today goes, won't we? Um, Kev, before you have to dash off to commentary, a quick prediction from you. Clean sheet for us today, I feel, another one, and uh, I think we'll win 2 or 3 nil. 2 or 3 nil, lovely, that's, that's what we'd like to go home on a Sunday, start on Monday with. Um, Kev, thank you so much for your time today, you're going to hurry off to commentary. Um, Carl, do you agree with Kev on yeah, his thoughts there? Yeah, I'm really happy, the appointment of Jack Lester and Stuart McCall. Stuart was in a team with myself in 2003. Um, really great character. It'd be wonderful in the training ground and the, the players will listen to him because he's been there, he's done it as a player, as a manager. Jack Lester, to hear he's going to be working with the strikers, you know, he's one of the best finishers i played with. I've never seen anyone get as many penalties as Jack Lester. He was such a cute, clever player. I, I think it's good. These are people who know what being a Blade's about and 
it's what we want. Just the, the right ethos, the right structure, and the positive, fresh outlook for us all. It's definitely going to be a good game. Uh, anyone that you're particularly looking forward to seeing? I'm looking forward to seeing Mr. Two up front. He's the person I'm, I'm really excited to see. Um, just to give the other striker a hand. Brewster working his socks off. I've been a big champion for Brewster. I really want him to do well. Uh, and I think with Didzi alongside him, he, he should be able to feed him. So I'm, I'm just hoping for chances. Chances, goals and work rate. Chances, goals, work rate. You didn't, you didn't think about becoming a coach? Oh, I've done my badges. It's not for me. It's oh, not really, me. I couldn't pass five yards myself. So I feel <laughs> a hypocrite moaning at players for not doing it. So just pick on them from up here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, keep me company while we watch the game. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, do make sure you buy that match day pass to watch the game. Kick off in a few minutes' time at 12.30. Uh, we take on Bristol City here at Bramall Lane. Um, just a quick one, Carl. Score prediction? I've gone three, three or four nil. I fancy a convincing win. If we get an early goal, I think it's going to be great. <laughs> um, but we just need, you know, one nil with tempo and drive and give us something to all cheer. Bring on the tempo. Yep. Mr. Exactly. Tempo. Exactly right. Right. Let's hand over to our commentary team. It's Matt Youngs and Kevin Gage. Enjoy the game. Time Paul Heckingbotter era begins of a home game at Bramall Lane as the new boss looks to build on Tuesday night's success against Reading. After a tumultuous week, which saw the end of Slavisa Jakanovic, Heckingbottom takes the reins, looking to pick up where he left off after a strong finish to his interim stewardship at the end of last season. United have recorded four points from their last two, so ahead of the visit of Bristol City, Heckingbottom has something to work with as he looks to end a three-match streak without a win here at Bramall Lane. Kevin Gage has joined me in the commentary booth. Kevin, as we look at Conor Harahan, the only change for Sheffield United this afternoon, what will perhaps be the main difference between what we've seen before and a Paul Heckingbottom side this afternoon? Well, what I'm hoping for...